lot of questions about the digital notebook post that I made on Instagram and Facebook. People wanting some quick information about how they can create their own. So I thought I would make this quick and short video. Um, before I get started, I just want to say that these digital notebooks are not my own idea. I actually paid for, with my own money, a, um, a professional development session on this earlier in the summer. And so obviously that's where most of this came from. And since then I followed a lot of other teachers on social media and saw what they're doing with their notebooks. Um, in fact, the look of this first page that I've created right here, I saw someone that I follow called Maniacs in the Middle. She posted a page that looks similar to this with a little post-it note. I thought it was really cute. So I adopted that into this, uh, this notebook. Now everything that I've made in this notebook, I have made and it's all my own work and all my own assignments. Um, but the idea is definitely not mine. So I take no credit for that. But I'll show you really quickly what's going on here. So I'm just in PowerPoint and um, this can also be done on Google Slides if you're a Google school. Um, the first thing that I did, if you go to design and slide size, I made my size eight and a half by 11. So that way, if I end up printing these pages out, um, it will already be letter size and it'll be ready to go to put in their binders or notebooks. Um, I'm probably going to have my kids keep a physical notebook to go along with their digital notebook. And it'll be kind of the same thing. Some things I'll want them to do digitally, they can print out and put in their physical notebook. Some things I'll want them to work out in their physical notebook, and we'll take a picture of it and put it here. But that way they have both copies, so that whenever we end up going full-time virtual, they'll have both. But in the meantime, they'll have that physical resource, because I think that's still valuable um, to have and do things by hand when possible. So anyhow, I made the size 8.5 by 11 for that reason. And by the way, you can use the same thing um, to make digital worksheets. If you already have a worksheet um, that you've created and you want to just now make it a digital version, you could do the same process. Make this slide 8.5 by 11 then it's the same size as your page. And you can make it vertical if you want to. It doesn't have to be this horizontal layout. You could make it, um, you know, eight and a half by 11 height, and then it would be vertical. All right, so that's first. The next thing is to set up your page the way you want it. Now, I just went and found some of this clip art. This is stuff I found online, some fonts that I played around with. This is a picture. And right now, I can move everything around. But when the kids have access to this, I don't want them able to change any of that. So now that I have everything set the way that I want it, I'm going to take a screenshot. On a MacBook, if you hit Command-Shift-4, maybe. Uh, apparently not. Um, I don't know why it's not taking a screenshot right now. My computer just got done updating, so there may be something I need to do there. But if you take a screenshot of the slide, let me see if I can find. There we go. There's always more than one way to do things. So take a screenshot. If you're on a Windows um, a computer, you can use Snipping Tool. It will do the same thing. Okay, so there's my screenshot. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to delete everything that's here rid of all of it. I'm going to go, I'm still under design, go to format background, picture fill, and then I'm going to use that screenshot that I just took. So I'm going to go to recents and here we go, today. Okay, so now the students cannot manipulate anything on this page. It is set. The only way they'd be able to change this is if they change the entire background. 
and if they change the entire background then there goes their entire assignment. So um, it keeps the kids from being able to delete questions they don't want to answer and that type of thing. But now there are going to be some areas where I want students to be able to type. So now I'm going to insert a text box over top of this um, background that I've created. And these text boxes will be available for them to edit when they open up the PowerPoint. I'm going to quickly change this to blue ink. You can see in my uh, hints here on the side, that's going to be a cue for the students. When it's uh, something they can edit or something they can type, it'll be written in blue. So anytime they see something written in blue, that's a cue they can type there. So um, I just want to show you a few quick things that I've done. I created a, a graphic or organizer here, I should say, not a graphic organizer, sorry, a table of contents. And at first I had tabs that I would created along the side of this notebook just using the shape feature. I just made some shapes that looks like tabs and put them along the side. And I was going to do the entire seventh grade curriculum in this one PowerPoint file, this one notebook. After I went through and put all of my Unit 1 materials in here, I just thought that was too much. So I think I'm going to do a digital notebook PowerPoint for each individual unit. So the kids will get this notebook. It'll be pre-set up for them with all of these pages, and they'll have everything they need for that unit, and they can go through. And if they're a virtual student, they can do it at their own pace based on the due dates. If they are an in-class student, then we'll work on a lot of these things together. Some of these things may be homework, some of this may be classwork or labs, but it will all be ready for them ahead of time. So here I have um, a place where I'm going to be inserting video. If you go to insert and then video, um, you can insert a movie here. I'm also going to link below it just in case that video doesn't work because you know sometimes these things can be fiddly. And then uh, I'm going to give them a physical copy of the notes page because again I think there's benefits for doing things by hand. So I'm going to give them a physical page if they're a classroom student. If they are a virtual student I might make it a digital worksheet that I can email to them. They could take a screenshot of it then and put it on this page when it's completed. Um, my notes here, I just want to make a quick mention. So I don't just read from a PowerPoint. That's why I'm not just going to send them a PowerPoint and let them figure it out. I do lots of explanations, um, guiding questions as we go, demonstrations, that type of thing. So I want all of my students, even the ones who are virtual only, to have that full experience. So I'm going to video um, my notes. Typically, we're talking 10-15 minutes max for those sessions. Um, that way it's not too overwhelming, not too much at one time. A few other things really quickly. Um, here's the graphic organizer that I posted. And I actually need to go back and change my directions for this. I changed course of what I was doing sort of halfway through. But all I've done here is the same thing as I did on that first slide I showed you. I put all of these shapes and arrows and boxes here using the shape feature. There it is. Okay, And you can play around with the color and size and you can type in them whatever you need. And then after I had created these sort of frame shapes, I copied them and changed their color and typed these titles into them. Now when the students open up their PowerPoint, it's not going to be in presentation mode. It will look exactly as you see it now. So that means that they will have all of these things off to the sides of the slides. So in this case, I want them to complete this graphic organizer. They can simply pull these shapes over from the side and put them where they go. Then they'll be able to save it in the correct place and it will be saved for them as filled out. And then if I decide to grade, I won't be grading the graphic organizer, but things that I do like this that I decide to grade, um, if I share this with them in OneDrive or with our virtual platform, I can just log in and see what it looks like. If 
uh, they're in class, I may be able to go behind them, take a look at their screen, see what they've completed. Uh, we'll, we'll figure that out as we go. Same thing over here. This is, they have to drag and drop boxes here and match up the pieces of this experiment with it. Um, you get the idea. And um, I'm going to be doing a lot of my modifications in here also. So this is my sort of regular version. A modified version of this, I may have um, some of these spaces might be pre-filled for them or I might put hints in the notes at the bottom. That's another thing. Um, they'll have that notes area when they open this up on their computer so you could add uh, hints or tips or reminders or page references there or notes references, links. Uh, something like this activity, I might go ahead and line up these steps for them or uh, something like that. So you can obviously make modified versions of any of this. You just got to take a little time to go through and set those things that you need for your individual students. Here's another graphic organizer. This time I inserted a chart, but it's the same thing here. Definitions and examples of variables. Now this is something I'm really excited about. This is how I'm going to be doing my labs. Um, I'm going to video myself doing my labs as a demonstration, pausing and stuff where I would normally in class. So if they're a virtual student, they can watch the video, and then they can use the data that I collect in the video to fill out this lab guide. If I have students in the classroom, I'm going to attempt to do labs by um, either doing them as a demo in the front of the class or assigning one particular student to do one step of something and wearing gloves along the way. Sorry about that. Um, but the, the lab will be here for them and this will be set up and ready to go. So again here I made this the background of the page and then I added a text box uh, for them to type their summary there. I added this specifically just as sort of a, um, an indication of them about how much they should be writing. But they could obviously change the font size and make it smaller if they needed more room. I did the same thing with these boxes here. Um, so now I have sort of a fill in the blank type of form. I also uh, here added this data table. This is on top of the background. This is something that they can go in and change. And I did that because uh, there's a feature here, chart column. If I uh, were to click on this column uh, bar chart right here, the students could copy this table into the spreadsheet that pops up and it will generate for them a graph for their lab. Now there are going to be times when I want them to go through, make the whole thing on their own. I think that's a skill that they need to have. But sometimes because of the sake of time or the nature of the lab, it may be easier um, at individual times to just create one using the computer. And that's a good skill to have too. So that's there for that purpose. More notes. Another graphic organizer. A fill in the blanks. I need to add text boxes there. More graphs. So that's how you do it. Um, there's lots of tips and tricks out there available on the internet. I suggest searching because there's lots of people who are way more uh, advanced than I am. This I've spent I don't know, maybe three or four days on total creating this one unit. Most of that, honestly, was just figuring out how I wanted to set it up. Once I sort of had this set up and ready to go, these graphic organizers and notes pages came along really quickly. So hopefully that'll get you off to a good start, and I wish you all the best of luck in your classroom this year.